Thank you for your interest in GMT Power Furl Booms. This video is a quick review of the features and functions of our furling boom to help you get acquainted with using it. We have had customers go from never using a furling boom to getting totally comfortable with it in a single outing. And we're just going to do a quick tutorial and review on how to properly use our furling boom to make it easier for you. Thank you for your interest in the, in the product. Um, the boom is very simple and easy to operate. There's just a few simple steps to take. As in any type of situation, if you might be reefing or dropping a, a mainsail, you want to just make sure that you prepare for the maneuver. Uh, you want to make sure you depower the sail a little bit, either by heading up or sheeting out, and then you execute the maneuver. So it's just a matter of getting comfortable with those steps. And uh, we're going to walk you through the procedure here for making furling your mainsail into the boom. Nice, simple, easy task. Here is a quick overview of the mechanical aspects of the power furl boom. The furling motor is housed inside the front of the mandrel. The locking mechanism is at the aft end of the boom. It is a pawl and ratchet mechanism. To raise the sail, you need to push the unlock button on the switch panel and wait for the green light to come on. You then raise the sail using the halyard just like any mainsail. You just need to push the unfurl button every few seconds when you can hear or feel increased tension in the halyard. The goal is to keep pace of unfurling the sail while raising it. To furl the sail, depower the sail and maintain some halyard tension by keeping a couple wraps on a winch. Push the furl button and keep pace paying out the halyard. Whether you are raising or unfurling or lowering, meaning furling the sail, there are two main aspects to keep an eye on, boom angle and sail tension. So an important aspect of operating your furling boom is the boom angle. That controls how the sail wraps around the mandrel itself. Our target angle is 87 degrees and so we are measuring that in relation to the mass. So it's 87 degree here, so just shy of horizontal, which means the boom, the aft end of the boom is up a little bit. A sail will always go uphill, so if the boom, aft end is too high, the sail will start pulling back. If the aft end is too low, it'll actually push forward and into the mast. All sails have, are a little bit different in terms of the final batten angle depending on the sail maker, so your angles may vary. This one happens to be a little bit more shallow, closer to 85 degrees, but you will learn that with experience, which is why it's good to have somebody up at the boom end of the of, up by the mast, keeping a visual on, on where your sail is furling as you're doing it the first few times. And then you can tell them, lower the aft end or raise it, depending on what the sail is doing. But as long as you keep in mind, the sail will always go uphill, and you just want to try and get it aligned with the batten of that particular sail. Somewhere in that 85, 87 degree range is going to work for you though. You want the luff to furl in a nice even stack, in alignment with the end of the sail track. Sail tension is also important for two reasons. One is to ensure the furled sail is snug and will fit inside the boom cavity. The other is to eliminate any chance of a backwind in the sail on the mandrel causing the sail to bind. To keep proper tension on the luff while unfurling, simply hit the unfurl button for one or two complete revolutions of the mandrel every few seconds. Let's talk specifically about furling the sail. It is best if you have someone at the mast to keep an eye on your furl at least for the first few times you try it. That person can let you know if the sail is wandering forward or aft on the mandrel and if the tension in the halyard is too slack. If you find the sail wandering forward of the mandrel, stop furling. You can adjust the boom angle to keep the luff of the sail in alignment. 
with the forward end of the boom simply by raising the aft end of the boom. Remember, if the sail is moving forward, it is climbing uphill. You need to reduce the boom angle in relation to the mast to keep the sail from climbing forward. If the luff of the sail starts to move aft, simply lower the aft end of the boom to maintain an even stack. If it is way off alignment, you can always unfurl the sail a few turns and go again. Think of it like rolling up a chart. You want to keep it in alignment while rolling it up because, unlike a chart, you can't even it out once you are done. Tension is the same. Keep the halyard tension snug while furling so the sail furls up nice and tight. A loosely rolled up chart is prone to creasing and not fitting in its tube, just like the sail. Let's talk a little about unfurling the mainsail. The boom angle is not as critical when unfurling the sail, but you want to be close to keep tension on the sail even to make the hoist as easy and low friction as possible. You will need to follow a few steps in the unfurling process. First, you need to unlock the mandrel. Remember the pawl and ratchet at the aft end of the boom? This is done from the control buttons on the switch panel. This will allow the mandrel to rotate and unfurl the sail. If the pawl is not released from the ratchet, the mandrel will remain in a locked position making it impossible to raise the main sail. One point of caution in unlocking the mandrel. If there has been halyard tension applied to the furled sail, there can also be a good deal of compression on the pawl against the ratchet. In some cases, this compression is greater than the solenoid can overcome to unlock the mandrel. This will be evident when you push the unlock button yet the green light does not come on and an alarm sounds instead. The solution is simple. So what that's telling me is you have too much um, lock is not released. The lock is not released. So the way to fix it now is you press furl. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. if the tension is too much and the ratchet won't release, yeah. then what you got to do is just furl it just a, a little bit to take the tension off of it. That is everything you need to know about operating your power furl boom. The most important thing is to get out and use it in calm conditions to get accustomed to it you will quickly develop a feel for its proper operation. If you are unsure about achieving the desired boom angle, there are visual references that can be used. Some Vangs have visual angle indicators built in, which can be helpful in establishing the proper boom angle prior to furling. It is easy to add a visual reference to the Vang if you like by taping a batten section to the Vang, which hits a certain mark when the boom is at the desired angle. You can also use a vertical height reference from the cockpit or deck. When the boom is at the proper angle, the height will always be consistent from a reference point on your boat. It could be an arm's length while at the helm, a certain height off the dodger, or even a pole or batten cut to length from your cockpit sole or helm. We built our first powerful boom in 2008. They have been used in a wide range of size and types of sailing vessels since with great success. They offer all the conveniences of a furling mainsail while maintaining all the advantages of reduced weight aloft, full battens, positive roach, and better draft found in conventional performance rigs. Thank you for watching and we hope you get many years of enjoyment and good sailing out of your GMT powerful boom